Hey there, welcome. Welcome to Rise and Receive. This is a reset point in your day where you get to stop whatever you're doing, take a breath, take a break, and sit back and explore how to receive your fulfillment by unlearning struggle. So today we are doing part three on a series on receiving things, and I've been illuminating blind spots. So we've already touched on the faulty focus blind spot, the wanting blind spot, and today we're going to talk about the fix it blind spot. So I invite you to take a moment, just take a break right now. And whatever you're doing, whether you're watching live, whether you're going to be watching this video later on, and just stop and connect with something that you want, a thing that you want. We're focusing on receiving things. So it could be a physical world thing like a particular toy, maybe it's an expensive toy, not so expensive, just an an object, clothing, shoes, jewelry, car, TV, a home, Uh, might be, you know, more of an experience, a relationship that you want, or you want to transform your body, but it's, it's a, it's got a focus. It's a thing that you want in your life. Okay. Now take a moment to just explore this question. Do you give yourself permission to really want it? Do you let yourself want what you want? Well, we're going to talk about that because kind of I got this idea based on a question that came in yesterday during my receive Q&A drop in hours where a woman was talking about something that she really wants, which is a relationship and that wanting is really strong in her. And after we talked about it a bit, one of the things I asked her was, Do you give yourself permission to just have a tantrum about it, that you just want what you want what you want? Well, we're going to talk about how a tantrum can actually help you open the flow gates to what you want. And uh, if you have any small children in your life that have tantrums or have had tantrums, and this sounds really weird, who knows, you might really like where we're going to go with this. So I invite you to sit back and, and just receive what we're going to be unpacking today. So if you don't know me, my name is Sonia Miller. I'm a speaker, coach, and best-selling author, and I help hardworking, goal-oriented people to see the blind spots that keep them from receiving their long overdue rewards. And I do this by teaching people how to receive because receiving is its own very specific, tangible skill set. And what I've discovered over 25 years as a coach is that basically you can be in two modes. You can either be in pursuit, hunting, hard work mode, or you can be in stopping, receiving, and experiencing what you want mode. But what happens is, is that because we live in a culture that's gotten lots and lots of validation and value and reward and compensation for being a really good thinker and a really good action taker and making plans and working really hard, we have a really well-developed skill set that's based in hard work. However, when it comes to receiving, that skill set's a little bit less familiar. And for some of us, it's like we're really clueless about it. The closest we can come is to think about receiving as getting, getting the prize, getting the goal. And that's awesome. But what about once you've gotten it, you're back to hunting. So receiving is much more than getting. And when you start to really learn the skill set of receiving, which is actually the easiest, most natural thing in the world, because it's based on being a human being versus a human doing, all sorts of things become possible. This is when people dissolve their inner glass ceiling. Because when you're operating as a human doing, that can only take you so far. But when you open up to the power of being a human being and you really see how it's useful and productive and produces results, then all of a sudden you go beyond your glass ceiling, beyond where you were stuck. This opens the flow gates and you get unstuck. So a blind spot, as I define it, is when your current point of view hides an essential insight. And your point of view is really important because your consciousness creates your reality. Everything that's happening in your inner world, thoughts, feelings, emotions, sensations, experiences, conditioning, all of that points to what your point of view is. Hi, Kaya. Good to see you. And when you are exploring receiving blind spots, then you get to explore how it is that you are operating more as a human doing versus a human being. 
because that's when the blind spot occurs. You're in do, do, do mode and you can't see a way through. You can't see the next step. And that's because you actually need to stop the doing and open up to seeing the wisdom of receiving. So with that, today we're going to talk about the fix it blind spot. So what's the fix it blind spot? The fix it blind spot is when you basically relate to yourself as if you need to fix yourself. Specifically, it occurs with, in this situation, when it comes to wanting a thing, the wants, you're trying to fix the feeling of wanting because one, for one reason or another, wanting is bad. Either you've been taught not to want, you've been disappointed by wanting, um, you've wanted before, you haven't gotten the thing. And so when our feelings get negated, invalidated, do 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 mode. Hi, Naomi, good to see you. <laughs> when your feelings get invalidated or shamed or judged, we get the message, and this happens, you know, when we're kids, this happens, you know, throughout all sorts of situations in life, that our feelings are bad, that wanting is bad, and basically that we need to make the feeling go away. Now, if you relate to your feelings as going away, you're going to discover that your wanting doesn't have permission to be here. So then you've got this, this stuckness that happens. It's like, I want this thing, but no, I shouldn't want this thing. So you start to try to talk yourself out of it. You try to talk yourself out of it maybe with some spiritual principles that you learned about. It's like, oh, attachment is bad. I need to, I need to let go and I need to not be attached. Um, or you've got some internalized voices maybe from childhood. You know, let's say you're just really wanting something and you're told, you know, that you need to focus on other people and be generous or there's all kinds of judgments that we, we get growing up and we get from society about wanting things. Okay, now let me check my notes because I really wanted to, to unpack this blind spot a bit. So if you're trying to fix your feelings, because and fixing means I need to look at my feelings like a problem that I need to fix because this feeling of wanting that thing is bad, it needs to go away. What's really going to happen in consciousness, and this is what happens completely unconsciously, is that you're going to develop or come to believe that you're not worthy of getting that thing until your feelings go away. That's what happens. It's not okay to want. I need to make that feeling go away, right? So that means, well, when I can finally make the feeling go away, then I'll be worthy of getting the thing. Here's the thing though. Those feelings don't go away. The wanting doesn't go away. So then what happens is you end up battling and your space, the space in which you can receive something is full of wanting something, but being conflicted about it. You may have heard me talk about what you resist persists, what you honor, what you allow, what you let be here can transform. So the feeling of wanting gets resisted and gets stuck. And that's what causes the stuckness around receiving the things you want. So instead of fixing, we have the opportunity to shift to nurturing. What is nurturing? How do we nurture the feelings that are natural to being a human being, right? Well, this comes back to the tantrum analogy, okay? If you think about a child, and if any of you have had kids, I'm sure you can relate to it, but it doesn't take much to kind of think about, at least even if you've seen it in the movies, what happens when a kid has a tantrum? When a kid has a tantrum, they're having feelings. They're upset, they're frustrated, they're overwhelmed, they're laying on the ground, they're kicking and screaming, okay? The tantrum is never the problem. We think the tantrum's the problem, but that's not the problem. It's the parent or the adult's response to the tantrum that starts to create problems. Now, when we try to control the behavior, that's more fix it, go away feelings. That's part of the problem. But if we can really nurture the feelings and separate out the behaviors and say, you know what? You're upset, you're angry, you're having a meltdown. It's okay. All you do is let it be here. You open up a space for the wanting, for the feelings, for whatever's here to be here. You receive that fully. 
And here's what happens. When you don't resist it, when you honor it, it can transform. In other words, in the world of receiving, there's a space for it to just flow on through. And if you've ever seen a kid have a tantrum, if all things being equal, eventually it passes. Sometimes quickly, sometimes it takes a while till they run out of stream. If they don't get resisted, if they don't get shamed, if they don't get punished, if there's a loving space, that can pass. And that's the truth for all of us. So when you let yourself have a tantrum about the things that you want, if you haven't been letting yourself want what you want, and this is what I told my client yesterday, I said, have you given yourself permission to have a tantrum? Which is really, if you do it in a journaling, if you punch a pillow, if you vent to a friend, I just want what I want, what I want, what I want, and you give yourself permission. Nobody has to fix anything. Nobody has to figure anything out. You don't do anything. You just let yourself want what you want. Have a tantrum. Let the feelings be here in a loving, nurturing space. It will move on through. And just like a child, when it passes and they're wiping their tears, and they're catching their breath, and you sit with the child, now there's a new space for a new possibility. You say, well, buddy, what do you wanna do now? They wanna go play. Or, hey, you want my help thinking about how we can like deal with this thing at school? <gasps> okay, right? We just let it pass on through. That's what happens with things when we let ourselves want what we want. That freedom of movement, allows things to move on through and there will be a spaciousness and we practice a l i awareness i'm aware that i want this thing let it be here want what you want have a tantrum about it if you want if you need to okay breathe give it space and then i invite more or better invitation is as simple as a question what else is possible now remember your consciousness creates your reality. When you open up the question, just do what's in front of you after that. Go on with your day, something else will show up, okay? And that's how you open the flow gates to receiving the things with you want and how a tantrum can actually help you. So I'm really glad that this is helping some of you and that this is landing. I'm gonna give you another way to invite more better. So once you've allowed the want to be here, I actually pulled a new card from my Receive Oracle card deck. Okay, this one's receive your wants. And it comes from the suit at the bottom, it says receive with ease. There are four suits in the card deck and if any of you haven't seen them yet, they're coming out May 5th. Yeah, there it is, the receive Oracle cards, okay. There are four suits. So the first suit is receive with ease. And this teaches you about the basic receiving principles. In other words, how to receive. Then there's another suit which is receive your wants. And these are things like physical world manifestations, relationships, things is what we're talking about, inner world manifestations, freedom, joy. So 14 cards on things, the actual things you wanna manifest, receive your wants. There's also receive your needs, because part of what we learn is in order to receive your wants, you need to be able to receive your need. You have the need to be free to want what you want. Okay, and finally there's receive soothing because as we start to receive everything that life gives us as sacred, sometimes the things that we're receiving are challenging, like these feelings, right? And so learning how to self-soothe is very important to becoming a fortunate receiver. So back to receive your wants. If you wanna open up the energy of invitation now, this is what you can say after you really let yourself Feel the feelings. I am willing to let myself want what I want. I am willing to let myself want what I want. It's a great way to open the flow gates. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like, please share. It helps me reach the people that I'm here to serve. If you're on YouTube, click the red subscribe button. If you'd like to get your own Receive Oracle cards, please go to receivecarddeck.com all one word, you can pre-order today and receive the companion workbook that will be my gift to you. Once they come out May 5th, the workbook goes away. You can certainly purchase it, but the gift will be expired. And I can't wait for you to receive your own Receive Oracle cards. And then if you'd like to explore really how to become a fortunate receiver, how to embrace this as a way of being an unlearned struggle to receive your fulfillment with much greater ease, check out the Receive course at receivecourse.com. I'm happy to answer any questions. 
Have a great day and a great weekend, and I'll see you at the next Rise and Receive. Bye, everybody.